good afternoon and welcome to Madeira. My name is Caroline and I'm traveling around this gorgeous island for the next couple of weeks with my other half Andy and for two nights of those two weeks we are staying here at Granny's farm and glamping in this bell tent. The little campsite or farm that it's set in is absolutely wonderful and it's full of all different kinds of things so I would love to take you on a tour not only of the actual bell tent but of the whole Granny's farm itself. This bed, despite it looking like it is on the floor, I don't know if it's just like an extra tall mattress or if it's on something, but it is super comfortable. And in comparison to the apartment that we were staying in for the four nights prior to this, and then the hostel that we stayed in in the first four nights, this is hands down the comfiest bed out of all of them. The pole is actually smack bang in the middle of the tent, so it gives it a bit of an idea as to just how much space there is. The bed was already made up for us. Again, it just helps to turn it from camping into glamping. And the bed sheets are wonderful as well. So are the pillows. And then we've got these really nice sort of dressy pillows as well. They also provided us with some towels, which when we first arrived were all very nicely laid out at the end of the bed for us. So again, unlike proper camping where you have to bring your own towels, it's really nice that they've provided us with some. On the pole, we have got an electrical charging point. So we're able to charge things like our phones and then all of my camera batteries. So GoPro, drone camera that I'm speaking to on at the moment so that's been most helpful and a Fitbit charger for Andy. The tent has also got two bean bags on either side, one for each of us so we don't have to fight over them. Because we're here in the height of summer we haven't really felt the need to have to use any of the bean bags and instead of been taking in all of the advantage of all of the chairs around the farm. We've also been provided with a mini fridge and that's been quite nice because we've been able to put goodies in there like a bar of chocolate that we wouldn't want to have put in that communal fridge with worry that people might potentially see it and think oh well we'll just swipe it for ourselves. Instead of it just being the tent canvas floor they've got a plethora of rugs all around so it's really nice and soft on your feet and a little bit warming as well when it gets into the evenings. Even when I'm stood on the bed I'm able to fully stand and jump up and down and not hit my head off at the top of it and I think that's yet another thing that makes this such a nice tent experience. They also have a gorgeous bar whereby you can come along and you can buy some of the traditional poncha but you can also get bottles of beer and wine and also sangria too and then they've got some really nice sociable tables and I love how you've got that wood of the same kind of structure as to what we had outside of our tent and then the little stalls and it just makes it really sociable with all of the other guests who are staying here too. For a campsite, I was absolutely blown away by how beautiful the bathrooms were and I suppose it makes sense because it's glamping. So inside of these bathrooms you've got these huge showers. At first I was like, is that a his and her shower head? But I've realised that there's one that you use more for like washing your feet and your legs, especially if you've been out hiking and they get really, really muddy, which for me often happens. And then another one to take a full on shower. I also love the tropical feel of the shower curtain. There's then this beautiful cohuck. Again, I'm absolutely loving this wood that just feels super rustic and straight off the tree. Just to hang up things like your towels or your clothes whilst you're in there showering. You've got a nice bench to be able to like put things on as well or sit down afterwards in the towel. A huge sink and what really took me by surprise because again when camping you wouldn't expect to see it but they've also provided us with things like shower gels and shampoos that are just there for our use and then toilet I will always say this it does exactly what you need it to do but also plenty of toilet paper has been provided because again when you're camping sometimes it's a case of needing to bring along your own but I really really love how this feels it's like super modern but at the same time super rustic how you've got like the exposed tiles on the roof Roof, and then you've got this amazing lampshade. It kind of gives me like a bit of a Caribbean feel to it, which I suppose plays in nicely with the leaves on the shower curtains. But I've been really impressed with the bathroom and this isn't the only bathroom. There is one that is a mirror image just next door. I'm not gonna bother showing you it because as I say, just flip it and it's exactly the same. Right here, like in Luxembourg. <laughs> 
One of the things that I love about Granny's farm is that it is just filled with so many different types of fruit trees and also you've got things like the grapevines running down the pathways to get to the bell tents. It's unfortunate that we've come at a time of year where nothing's quite ripening in season but the owner was explaining that when things have started to become ripe they will take them off, they'll wash them and then the guests are free to be able to eat from the fruits of what grows here in the campsite. There's a point where you've got sun lounges that if you just wanted to do a little bit of sunbathing you can come to this section and grab one of these and to be honest we haven't seen anyone fighting for them at all. They've also got four villas. I didn't realise that these existed here at the time of booking because I probably would have considered them at least. There's three along this walkway and then a fourth one around the corner that looks out into a lovely bit of grass. I thought that there was a lot more when we first arrived but what I've realised is that either side of the front door on one side you've got the living space and then on the other side you've got the bedroom with the bathroom at the back. Granny's farm has also got a laundry. It's obviously really loud in here because there's all different kinds of things going on. But if guests do want to do laundry, at the moment it's costing three euros fifty to do a load. But rather helpfully, they provided us with laundry detergent, which is part of the cost of the three euros fifty. And then actually, because it's so warm, you can just hang all of your bits and pieces either on the guidelines from the bell tents, or they have very helpfully strung up some washing lines between the fruit trees too. Additional seating areas involve this toboggan sled, which we did use a similar one to to get down off of the hill from Monte in Funchal at the start of our trip and it was heaps of fun. You can act like a big kid for five or so minutes and play around on these swings. There are Adirondack chairs, which are sat next to some of the best statues ever. Who's ever seen a statue of a frog quite as awesome as this? And finally, gorgeous hammocks to laze in. I think one of the reasons why those sun lounges don't tend to get a fort over is because these hammocks are so much more comfortable. And I think in comparison to a lot of resorty sorts of hotels where sun lounges by the pool are pretty standard, this just feels super special and really unique. And Andy and I have both spent quite a bit of time just whiling away the time chilling out and these are the comfiest things ever and now I really want to buy a hammock and put one in our garden we've seen out on the hiking trails loads of these open barbecue areas and this farm has got an outdoor kitchen we've got a barbecue pit which is really similar to what i've seen on all of those hiking trails but the part that i couldn't get because in the uk like when you have a barbecue there's the grill on top of it and when we were first welcomed into the farm the owner was very kindly showing us around everything and she explained like here you've got the grills and i was like oh this makes perfect sense so you also put your meat or your fish inside of these and then you put them on top of the grills and then that I think is going to be so much easier to clean in comparison to our barbecues that we've got at home. There's a whole plethora of wood underneath so that you can just use that to be able to get the fire going. And then we've got like our standard kitchen stuff. So you've got things like the giant tongs and the spatulas for flipping things on the barbecue, but we've got kettles, cutlery, we've got plates, a toaster, a couple of induction hobs because they've got an awful lot of induction pots and pans. So it's not just barbecuing outside. If the weather's like so hot and you don't want to be inside of a hot steamy kitchen, and just outside there's a couple of really nice picnic benches again with that gorgeous wood that's I think just you know been chopped from a felled tree sanded down and varnished and there's one of them with a parasol too which makes it really easy to stay out of the sun and then there's also the indoor kitchen I suppose for if the weather wasn't quite as good or just if you fancy cooking indoors. Inside of here we've got a fridge freezer that is communal but when we first checked in we had a look and they had like all of this free stuff and inside of it there's like a whole load of free food as well. We've got a really big sink for washing up which I really like because it means that you can wash up in one and rinse off the soap suds in the other and underneath you've got all of those pans, both pot pans and frying pans that have got the induction hob bottoms to it because in the indoor kitchen we then have a further two 
induction hobs, the oils and the salts and the peppers, which I've always said is great because when you're traveling around on holiday, the last thing that you want to be doing is taking all of that stuff around with you, but it's very much needed in order to be able to cook. And then we've got our plates and our bowls and our glasses and our wine glasses, and then we've even got like fancy coffee mugs. Down here we've got lots of toasters and kettles and cafetiers. We've got a massive pot full of like the wooden spoons, a huge knife block, and I suppose the reason why there is so much stuff in here is because there are a number of bowel tents. I mean, it's not a huge campsite. It's really lovely, really quite quiet, but naturally you can't just have a small number of plates and bowls and what have you. But overall, it's been a really lovely space just to be able to come in and use and be able to keep our costs of our trip down by not having to eat out for breakfast and lunches and dinners. And even though last night when we ate out whilst we were staying here, it's still really been helpful that we've been able to do breakfasts and lunches. And tonight we'll also be making dinner here too. To stay here, I appreciate that things do fluctuate a little bit with the exchange rate, but we did pay £38 to stay here per night, which to me just seemed like an absolute bargain and I well and truly think it's worth it and if you are interested in staying at Granny's Farm I will leave a link to booking.com's site because that's who we booked through just in the description below so do feel free to click on that if you are interested in staying here yourselves but I really hope that you've enjoyed having the tour of this place and that maybe it has helped you guys to choose an accommodation for your own trip if you have found it helpful I'd be most grateful if you guys could give that video a like and do feel free to leave me comments below letting me know what you think of this place.